Hello and welcome to a Stampscapes Live. I just received a packet of something that I'm looking forward to giving a try to. I'll show you what this is here. Let's see. Let's see what we have and hopefully it is what I ordered, which I never seem to have a problem with. But let's make sure that this is not damaged here either. All right, so, oh my God, look at that. Amazing looking surface there. All right, so this is the blue version of the holographic cardstock that I've been using for a couple pieces. It's this one, okay, this one's the gold pack, which is a multicolored pack. And I think looks pretty cool in these kind of stronger silhouette types of scenarios. On this one right here, I added that cloudy background so that the imagery would show up a little bit more and just to see if it would work. Okay, but this one right here, that blue, that white in the background there, I mean, it, it works okay on the red. The red's kind of an extreme color, but on this one right here, it, the white on blue seems to uh, I don't know, kind of blend in a little bit better. Hello, Beth. How are you today? Tonight, whatever time it is for you. All right, so this blue, I believe, is a multicolor pack. Opening up this pack for the first time, Beth. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. All right, I don't want to take all these out because I want to leave it in this, but... Um, let's see here. Okay, so there's... Yeah, these are just... Okay, th these are just a range of foils here. And this is what I was worried about here and kind of curious to see if I get some bending here. So a corner is bent on all these pieces, but what we have are some, oh, kind of iridescent, well, satiny metallic right here. Okay, ah, you're on Eastern Standard Time, I see. Well, happy evening to you. <laughs> Here's a kind of a medium tone blue. Now I think I could use all these. When I saw it online, I thought, okay, this looks like looks like some pretty nice um, colors right there. I was really going for the holographic though, but three different values of blue, all in the metallic, oh, kind of uh, brushed brushed metallic look. So it's not super shiny. And okay, here we go. These are the real key ones for me. They, I've had these other probably tones before. Let me see, they, yeah, they're single-sided, okay. So things like the um, the Star Dream papers um, with that iridescent surface on them, they're, you know, they're back and front, but these ones are just kind of coated on the, on the surface like that. But what I wanted were these two types out of here. This one looks insane. I mean, so does this one too, but... Um, I'm trying to think of which one I want to use first here. Um, I don't know, kind of mystical looking to me. All right, so I normally don't work this large. And th 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 these papers too um, are really funky to me for... Um, because of the sizing, you would think these are eight and a half by 11, but they're probably based on, I don't know, the metric or different types of um, sizing. So these are, I don't think it's written on the pack, but these are, so these are eight and a quarter by I think 11 and three quarters or something like that. 11 and a half, a little bit more than 11 and a half, 11 and 5 sixteenths here. So kind of a funky configuration, you know, if it's North American or something like that, it's going to be based on, um, you know, the master sheets, which break down into eight and a half by 11 eventually, you know, but, um, you know, from whatever master sheet they're started on. So, okay, so on this one right here, I'd like to keep it this size, but if I want to do any kind of matting at all, you know, I need... You know, I'll have a lot of papers that are eight and a half by 11. So this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of, you know, dark cardstock on the back. And then I have that little tiny 
thin white around there, which I usually like to do. So we're going to cut this down. Hello, Kay. Uh, we're going to cut one of these down here. Should I go with this really dark one? God. That's kind of a, it's a little bit daunting. Daunting in terms of, you know, we're going to, unless I stamp on with the top of it in white. Huh. Maybe, okay, let's do two pieces here. I, I wanted to do one. I was thinking about doing one big piece. Yeah, all right, I'll do this one at another time, but let's do something. Let's see, if I cut this just in half, then I can mat with anything. Let's try a couple different scenarios here. I'll just do a couple similar backgrounds, and then I will um, stamp out the imagery maybe in both white and black over the front of it and we'll see which one looks better you know if if they look good at all <laughs> I, I would think they would but i don't know this one's this one's like super dark right here and i'm always kind of curious to know how those are going to come out so let's go with uh let's go oh let me see here. Let me see if I can get this in half here. So this is 11 and a half. Let's go traditional five and a half. So it'll be roughly a half page, two half page scenes. Okay, let me give me a measurements down here correctly. When I look at this paper, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like underwater or something like that. That's 11 right there. All right, that's 11 right there. Maybe this paper isn't... Unless I'm getting an illusion here. Let me see if this paper is even squared off here. So that's 11 and... Let's see... Not over... Hmm, I guess it's an illusion. When I go like this right here, this does not seem the same width to me. It seems a little, it seems like it's off a sixteenth. Well, I'll square it off here because this is 11 inches now and this is, this will both be five inches here. Oh, here's the thing too. So th this will be like, these are like light pillars, but I was thinking that this might be better looking um, in terms of like cloudy formations in the background. So, huh. Okay, let's go light pillars on one. Or let's do, let's, let's do quarter page, maybe. Or like four, but yeah, let's go quarter pages on this one since I'm doing two. Um, Let's not do a. <laughs> Let's not do a four-hour live stream like yesterday. <laughs> but that that card yesterday, well, not a card, but I don't know what you would uh, call it then. But uh, that was big. That was a big piece. Okay, so four inches here. Okay. I just spray sealed my large um, moon in the forest floor uh, right now, and um, it looks a lot better than last night because it everything was kind of drying and muting out a little bit um, with so many layers of uh, of ink. Let me go get that. All right, so I've been doing a lot of, um, just as an aside here, but here's the spray sealed version of Moon and Forest Floor. And I sprayed it with a glossy coating, okay? This is done on a matte, a semi-gloss cardstock, okay? Which is a lot easier to find out there. Um, I could I could double spray this and it'll get much glossier, but you can see how much, how glossy this became just from the use of the sealant. So if people can't find, you can find glossy cardstock 
in the U.S. just easily. You can go onto Amazon and buy glossy cardstock if you want to, um, chrome coat, whatever. But the, the semi-glosses can be found much, much easier. It seems worldwide just by going online. Uh, for some reason, I don't know who's using gloss, semi-gloss either because it's more of a professional type of coating. You know, people want like satin coated looking business cards or something like that. But um, okay, but that being said, if you want a glossy finish to it and you just can't find the glossy card stuck, then just use the semi-gloss if you could find that. And then you just spray seal it. And spray seal is you can find anywhere. Okay, you can go to the hardware store and buy a polyurethane if you want to. But you spray seal these things and, you know, the uniformity of color and the saturation of tones and everything like that come out so much easier. And plus on the semi-gloss, if you want to, you can use colored pencils and everything like that. Okay, so that being said, um, before I start this off too, people were asking me, have you spray sealed these... Um, these coatings right you know the um this type of um holographic card stock okay and I, these ones right now are spray sealed okay i'm going to spray seal mine twice because i think if i rub this really hard it'll still come off on my finger okay so i just gave it a really light spray but you can see that and so i sprayed up top like that where it's heavily applied with ink but you can see i mean there's overspray over this whole area because i didn't you know, bother covering up like this area in here or anything like that. But it doesn't affect the, um, that holographic, um, what, whatever aspect to the surface at all. Okay. Sometimes it might a little bit, it might look like, it might not like as chromey, you know, and it might look more like brushed, I don't know, whatever metallic, you know, kind of coating on there if you coat it too much. Now this one right here had a much op more open area. So I just sprayed I'm targeting kind of this area up here when I'm spraying, not right on here because it'll overspray like down here. So I'm when I'm spraying, I'm kind of targeting right here so that it, I get that overspray and it kind of covers up down to that area of coverage, okay? And then right across this, I just gave that a quick spray right across there. All right, so spray sealing, no problem on these in terms of the retention of you know, whatever the surface quality is on this. And I sprayed it with a gloss. I mean, I went, I probably wouldn't spray it with a, you know, a matte because this is kind of glossy to begin with, unless you want to go for some sort of special effect where it's more matte. Uh, but anyway, um, let's see here. What did it... Uh... I have something similar, Linda was saying here, but I don't think I have the iridescent ones, not in the same package. Oh, okay, so the, the same types of foils there. Yeah, this one's the same one that um, that the gold came from, the gold multi-pack, so those two that I just showed. But I looked on, on there and I thought, I think this blue might be even more suitable for uh, you know, scenes. I mean, that red, I, I think I love the red and the gold a lot, but, uh, you know, I, when I'm using surfaces, if I'm going for a colored paper, um, you know, like that star during lapis lazuli blue and things like that, it just seems to go so naturally with, um, scenes. All right, so I'm going to try this one in kind of more of a light pillory type of thing, although that looks really good for sky and water. I'm going to do it in this one right here, but now, I, now I'm not sure if I'm going to go with this one vertical. I might go with both of these kind of horizontal because that looks like clouds to me or something like that inherently. This one's more of that northern -y light type of pillory type of look like that, you know? But that looks really nice like that. Okay, so this one I'm going to do um, with some, uh, you know, clouds in the background so that I can see my imagery that I stamp over it because this is just going to be too dark to just stamp on straight, I think. But we might be able to just stamp on straight, you know, and white on this one, you know, in this dark color. Because I don't even see, there's nothing white in here, so it's just the darks that would stand to, uh, you know, kind of uh, hide um, um, a black impression. The white might stand, I don't know, the white. Okay, we, 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 let's just get to it. I'm kind of uh, overthinking this here. All right. 
Yeah, travel dreamer, I'm with you. Night or ocean scene, underwater. Can you imagine that if you have some underwater imagery? Especially if you have like, um, if you have colored types of um, brilliance or um, stays on ink, which I don't. Okay, I think that'd be really cool in here. Uh, silver in here might be kind of neat and interesting too. But you know the interesting thing about this paper though? Look at that green in there, huh? And then that other one, I don't know, this other one's like every color. It's kind of, this one's like the silver one, but it's blue. It's a light blue, if I can show you that one. God, this is so insane. Yeah, okay, now you see that right there. This one has that bluish tinge to it, but then it has all the colors of the, uh, like that spectrum in there, you know, like a prism or something like that. All right, let's get to this right here. I just re-inked my white pad here. Uh, yeah, let's see, that one's not going to do it. Let's start off with another cotton ball. Look at this, I'm going through my cotton balls pretty fast. This was used to be a full pack, you know, like a, I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago or something like that. I hope so, Travel Dream, I don't I never know. Yeah, waves, something like that. I was telling, I was telling my wife, I said, yeah, I was on, I just got off of a live stream. They were over at the gym. And she goes, well, you weren't online when we left, were you? And I said, yeah. <laughs> They're gone for like four hours, but I went on about a, an hour before they left. I said, hey, you know, can you pick up something on the way back home? I don't feel like cooking after going, you know starting off like cooking it in like nine when they get back okay so i'm gonna stamp okay so my go-to things are the lakeside cove when i'm doing um experiments like this it's a solid enough um image you know there's plenty of um silhouette on here oh i wanted to try like a moon too on something like this okay which i haven't done on those other types of papers but I thought maybe the blue would be able to um, hold the image of a moon like that. And then I can add in these clouds that are being illuminated by the moonlight. I thought it would work maybe with blue on here. So I'm going to try. Uh, all right. So this will be like this. And okay. So let's go with the cloud formations like right across in here, okay? I'll go a little bit lower. This isn't quite four and a half right here because again, that kind of funky kind of sizing right here. Um, where did that other piece go? The other piece that was, let me see, someone stole the, someone stole the card. Okay, this one's a little bit bigger. Okay, let me go with this bigger one. All right, so, Remember, uh, this is white brilliance. It will dry on here, but it won't adhere. So we're going to have to spray seal this, you know. If people don't have spray sealants, you gotta get some spray sealants. Even if it's, I, I recommend spray sealing everything. Even if you're doing a matte card stock with colored pencils or something like that, or, um, you know, Copic markers or something like that, it just, it'll increase the saturation and vibrancy of most of your different media. It protects it too. Um, but if you can kind of get a little bit more of um, intensity and saturation and, you know, and all that good stuff um, from most of your different types of media out there, just with spray sealing, even if it's a light spray seal, I think it always kind of improves on the uh, the pieces. You know, when you're doing like oil painting and stuff like that, they're usually coating it with like a like a varnish, like a Damar varnish or something like that too. So we can have all that benefit just with the you know the use of a I don't know 
a sealant that's going to take like five seconds to do, especially on a, like a quarter page piece. That being said, I don't spray seal the printable vinyls though, because um, a lot of the thing that I'm doing on there is it's adhering so strong and spray sealing doesn't really, I don't know, on a lot of that media on there, um, it's a lot of this white and it would stand to kind of disappear. Well, you're saying, well, you're doing it on here. Well, I have to do it on here because it doesn't stick to this. But on the printable vinyls, it sticks like, you know, like instantly. So I don't need, I don't need to worry about that at all on that. Okay, so that is my cloudy formation on there, but it's also going to be within those rocks, okay? So those rocks should stand out in the uh, the light and not be just totally obscured in pattern showing right through the rocks. So we want to make the rocks um, reasonably opaque. And then, let me see, let me put, <laughs> on this one right here, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I guess it could, but if I put this right here, I just need this field of um, white right in here, and then I'll stamp over it in black. And then I'll see about adding some additional clouds up here or something. Hey, let's give it a try. I don't know if it'll look as good as just having kind of that cool paper like that showing through. But, you know, I want to see about options with this. Or what I could do on something like this is stamp it out and stays on black and then take this area right here and color it in with a pen so that it's really white. And the more opaque this is, the less that would show through. But I don't know, maybe we want it to show through. So this is the type of thing that I'm kind of not sure about here. Maybe we want that influence of that to be showing through some of this, just so it doesn't stand out so kind of like, what you know, foreign of a of an opacity within this. So I, I don't know. Here, as I, I'm trying to figure it out as I'm talking my way through it. I'm thinking about kind of a lighter touch right here might be better. Now that I think about it like that, see that? Well, that does kind of block it off pretty good up there though, doesn't it? See, I wasn't sure if that darkness would show right through that or not. On something like this blue too, like even if I do stamp out the, I'm stamping, I'm, I think I'm gonna stamp this out in black, but let's do, let's do this one. I'm just, this one I'm gonna do in the white here. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe I should plan out these videos a little bit. Yeah, it does look like you're looking through the blinds, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more cloudy kind of touches up here. It'd be kind of cool to cut out like a little template where I can do like these little streaks across here. So I'd like to do like wispier types of touches like this, but if you're doing any kind of wiping on this type of service, you're wiping, <laughs> it might go on there a little bit, but basically you're just wiping it right off. Nothing is sticking on here. Oh, okay, here's that color kind of transfer on here, which is really interesting to me that this coating on here is probably some kind of water-based um, dye or something like that right over the holographic. You wouldn't think it would be, but I'm thinking that the water-based Brilliant ink is the thing that's kind of putting it back into solution and it's kind of rubbing right on here. Cause I'm not like scouring this really hard. I'm just like lightly dabbing it on there and it's coming off on there. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, corals and stuff like that. This would be a really fantastic uh, underwater scene. It's like the deep sea though, huh? And then you can do that, you know, little um, thing with a, uh, Dr. Martin's, or you can just add little bubbles, you know, coming up or something like that. I haven't done an underwater scene in a while, but I, I used to like doing the um, the light beams coming down into here. I guess you could, I don't know if you'd do the light beams on something like this because those beams are already in there. 
but I don't know, maybe. So let me see, you have something like this in here, and then you have those counter beams coming through here with white ink. You know, maybe this is underwater, and there's like some kind of thing that's coming down into here. So that would be running counter to it like that. Then you have some like coral or, you know, kelp in here. All right, yeah, we might, might have to try that. I might have to go back underwater here pretty, pretty soon in a future vid. Okay, so let me get a little bit more of a kind of a cloudy structure in here. I'm blabbing way too much. It seems like there's a lot of possibilities with this paper here. Or more than what I was thinking about before when I was, you know, playing around with it earlier this week. If that's when it was. When I think about this paper, just in general, it seems like it's a little bit limiting, but I'm starting to see a little bit more possibilities. Um, I thought it was limiting before because it's just so crazy strong of a surface to uh, to utilize, but... Um, you know, with limitations as far as um, things that'll show up on it. But things like this white ink, I think it's opening up a little bit more possibilities. If it works, you can get it. If it doesn't, then uh, <laughs> then we'll know. You know, maybe on this video right here. Not that I get everything down, you know, really well in my... If at all, you know. But especially in kind of a first attempt. Don't judge this paper on based on this video. <laughs> All right, so like I said, I'm adding a little bit more to this one. I'm trying to add a little bit more to the technique with each kind of, uh, I don't know, whatever experiment. Okay, let me see. I just want to make sure I didn't get rid of everything too much. That moon is going to go in there. Maybe it'd look better with stars, huh? <laughs> I don't want to cover up too much. You know, it's it's kind of like a this oscillation of uh, kind of taming something and the retention of the surface. All right, yeah, I'm not going to add more down here because that's going to be a little bit of the reflection down there of that water. Uh, here, let me try something. So, okay, so I was removing when I was streaking in here. So this is going to be the water portion. So let's go in like this, maybe and put in some streaks like this down in here. So it's a little bit more varied down here, okay? It's start, it's starting to set up pretty well that it didn't it's not removing, you know, super easy, which is good cuz you know, we want that ink to set up on there. All right, so I did that. So I put these little streaky kind of areas down in there, which will be the water section down right in here, which I hadn't thought about doing before, but this is kind of, you know, like influencing me. All right, let's, let's see. Let's give this a shot here. I think this on the holographic would be pretty easy to do because it's... Uh, you know, when we're when we're starting about an underwater scene, um, if it's on a white piece of paper, it's like unlimited usage of what we can do, pretty much. But if you're on something like this, like if you're going to stamp fish in here, like if it's the deep sea, I guess you would do them in um, like a white or like a silver or something like that. I think wouldn't that be cool? Okay, let's heat that set this a little bit. Can you see that blue showing right through there? As this, as I've mentioned before on um, videos, the white pigment inks tend to move more towards um, transparency when you when they dry. 
But this one especially, I mean, it looks like it's really looking like that light blue. So it's almost like heat setting it kind of a, I don't know. It's like some of that blue like bled into it. I don't think it's, I think that's physically changed that color of that um, white on there as opposed to the white just being a little bit more translucent or transparent. So I can see those colors underneath there, but this white here is blue. I don't know. It's interesting because that red one didn't look like pink when I dried it. So this blue one, I don't know, the chemistry might be slightly different. All right. So that being said, that I lost a little bit of my, um, or a lot of my um, contrast in here. So let's add a little bit more of this in here. You can do this after you stamp the imagery too, but the thing is, if I have this imagery over the top of it, if I want to lighten that cloud up, I'm going to be lightening up, you know, my imagery over the top of it. So sometimes you want to get the most of it down uh, pre-impression right here. It's more fun when you don't plan the videos out. <laughs> Definitely impromptu uh, with the entire concept. <laughs> The problem with not planning out, um, it's like the videos get longer and longer and longer. Cause I could be, I don't really remove things to do. Um, but it seems like I just keep, it's a never ending kind of additive process, you know? Oh no, we're going to do, uh, let's do five scenes, you know, actually the scrap scenes got reduced down, but I spent a lot more time in those little scraps than um, than what I was intending. Okay, so I, I was thinking I, what I need to do on these videos is uh, once in a while, like on those little scrap ones, I need to set a timer and limit myself. And then I'll just, you know, uh, whatever, stamp accordingly, especially if it's going to be kind of a, if it's supposed, if it's meant to be a, like a quick scene type of uh, format. You know, not spend a half an hour on a two by two inch, uh, you know, tiny uh, scrap piece of a uh, card. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that one was, I think that was my favorite one. This little two by two inch on this. Um, I forgot what color that was. I found it online. It was like, because I didn't even know the uh, the name of the uh, the ink that was being uh, uh, the the surface that was being used. All right, so let's go here. Okay, brilliance black. Um, and again, I'm thinking you know if I was going directly on here, the stays on I think would have been good directly onto the foil, okay? But I'm not going directly onto the foil. I'm really stamping over the top of white brilliance ink, okay? So it's not like this is what this is going to look like on the foil, we're really stamping it over the top of the brilliance, which is what's happening a lot with the printable vinyls. Hello, Miss Louise. Uh, hello, Jeannie, Sandy, Beth. Or wait, I just already said uh, it's some people. Sorry if I already said hi. Hi to anyone else that's on, if I didn't say. All right, so. It looks pretty good, I think, on here. Where, how it'll look with that moon, I don't know. I don't know if not the moon will show up on here, but that it seems to be a kind of a natural pairing on there. Like that. Now, I, this one's a real small scene, too, but... Um, and I would use this, like I said, um, a lot of these, um, surfaces like this, I think a really great size would be something really small, like a two by two or something like that. If 
but I'm just working larger on these ones because I want it. I get a better idea of how something's going to work out in terms of media compatibility by going large, um, just so I can see it across a, a wider area. And then, you know, you would think that testing out, you would do it on a smaller piece. But for me, I like using something larger just to get the, a better, maybe a fuller view of something. And sometimes the media application is easier on a larger piece rather than going small. But, you know, the ideal kind of sizes might be kind of smaller sometimes. Hello, Kathleen and Cheryl and uh, everyone, anyone else? Those watching on a TV that don't have a, a keyboard. <laughs> okay, so there's my moon on there. So yeah, the moon, you know, I, I need to add in some other types of things around it. It's not light enough. I'll lighten it up though with some additional ink on here. I'll dry it first, but okay. So look at these different striations in here. Like when you go like this, it's a little bit different and look at it down there in the water. It's like those, have you seen those, um, those, I don't know what, what they are, gifs or something like that, like with a, a scene, but then there's these like moving little ripples down in the water. That's what this is down here in that watery section. Even if this could be kind of cool, if you don't have any sky up here and you just stamp it way up top like that, and then you have all these things just in the water and see, we've blocked out those Enough of the rocks. I don't mind some of that showing through like that, but I wouldn't want all those ripples to be showing right through all those rocks down here. But there you have it there. I think we've answered kind of a one of the things with moving water like that. Maybe I'll do it on this one. So see this one right here, it's larger. If you stamp that up here, then you have all that water down here. <laughs> Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool effect, I think. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm with you, Kay. That that was the thing that, um, for me, a lot of these tests are about, especially with these extreme, I call this an extreme um, holographic. It's because of this sheer amount of contrast between the light and dark on here, you know. Maybe this one doesn't have so much. I don't think this one has as much contrast. It doesn't see it's I don't even see like any white on here. You know, but it's everything is just so dark. It's like that blue right there is like a I don't know. It's like a 50. It's going from like 50 to 100 percent on here. So it's like we don't even have like I mean, unless I have my like light completely showing in here, you know, but for the most part, if someone's just holding this, it's an otherwise real dark piece. All right, that's really starting to bow. Let me just let that set up here a little bit before I hit that um, moon with some lighter tones. I'm just going to hit it with um, a uh, cotton ball with some more or like a Q-tip with some more, I'm counter bending this so it's not so bowed, but it's starting to bow this way. But let's test this one out. I wanna test this paper out and see what um, a white impression would look like over the top of it. So we'll stamp out the Lakeside Cove in white, okay? But still, I mean, if you stamp this out in white, if you don't do any of that blocking out on those rocks, you know, all that patterning is gonna show right through those rock that rock area. So we're going to have to do, you know, a little bit of blocking out still, but we don't have to block it out as much because I don't think I want to go with a, a white impression of these um, trees against a white, you know, cloudy background because it's going to obscure the um, the silhouette, you know, the of the uh, the tree, you know, the tree line up there. So this should go pretty fast and we'll see if it looks any good at all or just how white it's going to be, at least with the brilliance ink over the top of this if it's I think it needs a little bit of contrast but maybe if it was too contrasty maybe it wouldn't look good I don't know the white brilliance though impression I don't know if it's if it's going to be strong enough against that 
Uh, anyone uh, want to uh, wager on it? <laughs> Not with me. W with each other, you could say, "Hey, you got uh, you got uh, you got fifty cents on um, it's not going to work." Or uh, there's a possible, impossible um, wager. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, let's just go, or should I go? Should I go vertical, like this? Should we try it? Since I think the other one, I'm gonna go horizontal again. This one right here. I'll try to employ whatever seems to be working on this larger piece. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let me see here. Let Let's go. Let's go vertical on this one. Okay, so I'm gonna go like, now nah, let's go down here, like that. I don't wanna, I'm not gonna do it too thick. By the way, if anyone bets against it working, don't worry, I'm not offended. It's not betting on me, it's betting on, you know, the brilliant sink. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're betting on the media. I'm joking. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't bet on this channel. We'll get shut down, you know, uh, by the regulators. <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of softening up that a little bit down there just by putting a little streaky kind of motion back into it. And then we'll go like this, okay. If this works, this will be like a really fast uh, potential, uh, you know, whatever card, right? Now, um, I really, okay, I need to order that, uh, my stays on white, okay? I've got a brand new stays on pad that just doesn't work on anything, but someone told me in one of these videos, they said, oh, you, you have to, I was saying, yeah, it's like, uh, it's already dry. They said, oh, you need to, anytime you use the stays on white, you got to re-ink it every time. I was like, oh, okay. I wasn't real familiar with stays on, so... So the stays on pigment white. I have a feeling, you know, you can just stamp it down there and you won't even need to spray seal. So when I was mentioning the benefits of spray sealing, okay, that's more for like color saturation. If you're just stamping in white, you know, you're, you're not you're gonna, you know, you're not gonna benefit it, you know, really from, spray sealing, I don't think, unless it's, you know, affixing it a little bit better to the surface. But if it's something in white and you're spray sealing it, it would probably become a little bit more trans, move towards transparency and it wouldn't stand out as much. So, you know, with the stays on, I just don't, you know, probably not needed if beneficial at all. Okay, I'm wiping it down here, um, these transition zones. Maybe I don't even need to do that. Let's see if this looks okay at all. I'm aiming this right portion right here, right in that stripe down there, like that. Is anyone holding their breath? <laughs> Jeannie, I guess you need this paper. Jeannie, now you, you're talking about, uh, have I, now Jeannie, you haven't bought any of the, you haven't done any holographics yet, right? Maybe this blue will be the one, Jeannie, unless you hate these scenes that come out here, the way they look. You know, it'd be kind of interesting on this paper too, is silver, I didn't even think about that. Okay, I'm holding this down to get a little bit of a better impression like that. I think that looks pretty good. 
I went a little bit high, you know, I stamped, I stamped too high with that. So my little areas that like right up there, but I don't know. I think that looks okay. I stamped, yeah, I stamped way too high. I should have stamped lower. Okay. No, I stamped, I stamped too low. I, st I need to stamp higher like that. Okay. But here's what I'm going to do though. We have this big open area up top. You can add in other things up there, but, um, I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go in with that, uh, you know, with some stars. Maybe I shouldn't have put that haze back there. Maybe you can just go on straight with your white imagery. Let's see how this looks on there. Some of the uh, Dr. Martins. Okay. Hello, Shelly. I'm usually on the mark a little bit more, especially if I'm, when I'm being so uh, careful to be uh, to be on there. You know, it, um, as I was mentioning in another video, what someone was telling me or made a comment on Facebook. I don't know where, where they made that comment. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was one of you guys. Um, but uh, they said that... Um, they have some of the foil, but working using foil, like stamping on it, it made them it makes them dizzy. So they stopped using like this particular type of foil, not necessarily the blue one, but the other ones. They just use it to I don't know, do something else. It was like a um foil uh, foil I don't know what it was, matting or something like that. Um they don't stamp on it, so I don't know. Maybe I was like, uh, uh, I don't know. It's like hit, you know, this uh, this paper hypnotizes me. It's too hypnotic. All right, so here's some stars up here, giving it that little bit of a kind of stability up there. I'm trying to go like this to make it look more like a. Um, what's it called? Milky Way. <laughs> See, I can't even think of things. It, it pretty much using this paper, I find it wipes your it wipes your brain. It scours your brain of a uh, of knowledge, which may be a good thing. So that you know, you're going more off uh, at whatever into intuition. <laughs> All right, so this is that right there. I think this would make a, you know, kind of an interesting Christmas card. Start your Christmas cards over again. If you've already finished your Christmas card set, uh, make a new batch, you know, or send out, you know, just send out two uh, to people. All right, adding in some of those larger dots in here. You know, this has that color of, uh, there are some northern lights that look like that, huh? It's that greenish blue now that I think about it. Okay, I'm trying to, trying to emphasize this motion right here, or angle. Gosh, that's not showing up in my camera at all. Let me get a little bit closer here. Okay, here we go. I don't know if I'm overexposing a little bit, but that's about right, right there. Um, I'm looking for my reads. Okay, let me try this too. Okay, I don't want to skew one of these because I'm not going to be able to... And I don't want to remove, like, everything off of here and start over again. But... As I always mention in these, and if you haven't been on one of these foil pieces before... 
what I always mention is when you're stamping on these, especially with the thick inks, it's easy to stamp down and kind of move it a little bit because it's the paper is not absorbent at all. And if you're going with a thick ink like this and you're stamping on there, it's easy to kind of move it a little bit. I guess maybe not if you're doing using like a misty or something like that, like a platform, but um, just kind of be aware of it and just, you know, when you go go on there, just lift and don't, um, you know, skew. I still get some of that skewing, though, on some types of papers. So be careful about that. Practice on like, you know, a piece, you know, on a different piece of foil or a scrap piece of foil. You can stamp it down there and then, you know, just when you have it down, when you have the touch down, just, you know, just take a paper towel and wipe it right off. It'll come right off. Yeah, on this one, Kay, it's like uh, when you're watching, you know, do not watch these videos uh, if you're, you're like, someone's prone to, uh, um, you know, having like a seizure or something like that. I got a joke about that, but there is like, like a lot of like flashing kind of lights. When I'm looking at this sometimes, um, when I was doing especially the gold piece like this, I have a lot of like that light kind of flashing in my face. And then when you're working kind of close to it, you're, there's this depth thing. Cause it's like that area in the background looks like farther away. So it's like, I think my eyes are kind of like trying to focus on and my, my, my camera is trying to focus on too. It's, so it's the same type of thing that's going on, I think a little bit. So I don't know, you can get, that's where that one person said they get a little bit dizzy uh, working on there or working with it. All right, now this one right here, I think, you know, you can go in with like that silver or gold or something like that. I mean, not gold, but uh, like a green on here for some stars, just to reiterate that. Okay, I'm getting a little bit hung up on this. Um, this white one because I really like that look. I mean, that's a really quick piece right there. Uh, card. All right, I need to position myself better. <laughs> this, one, this one's kind of teetery right here. This is a word stamp piece. I think I just skewed it, but I'm not sure. Let me see. No, I felt it move slightly when I did that, but I, I guess I was okay. I thought it was gonna move around the, the P a little bit. I mean, I should have stamped that a little bit lower, but a couple of little crystals on here might be kind of cool too. But anyways, this one was like minimal. I think I would remove the, um, I would, I wouldn't, do I wouldn't bother with the uh, the blocking out. I think that looks fine down there. Those rocks, you know what I mean? With that white in there, it's, I don't see this. I'm not aware of, you know, that patterning showing up in the rocks enough to, to bother blocking them out in the future. I would just stand directly on the top um, of that. And then, you know, for this one right too, um, you can mat with a little bit of white around there. And then that other paper comes in this pack. So you can kind of put that other border out here. If you want to put a darker border on it, um, that would be kind of good. This one's just a super dark blue or black, you know, but a little white in between there. I think that would be kind of cool. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, the paper's in the info section, Kathleen. It's, it's a, it's a holographic cardstock. So just expand on that area where it says show more and it will, it'll bring that up here, but it's a specific holographic. It's more of these, when you look at, um, a lot of, most holographics look like that I've seen look like this. Okay. Just different versions of this but this one's more of these directional kind of light pillar types of things if it's like that if this it's horizontal but there's a huge amount of contrast this one's the pink right here that comes in the gold pack 
but the ones that I, I'm using today are the blue pack, which is a multi-pack of, I think there was three different colors of like a blue iridescent paper. And then it has two versions of this holographic here. I would have preferred to have all of this, you know, but I don't have those, um, those other blues in there. So, so I, I find most of them useful. Um, the other blues look more like a star dream to me, which is kind of cool too. All right, so let's see here. Um, okay, so this one's still drawing a little bit. I want to I want to add to this one here, but I I just think that white looks looks really dynamic in here on here. Um, but I want to make that a little bit lighter, and let's see how this one goes with kind of more of a traditional kind of lighting in here, and then we'll bring in and add like some snow or something on the top of that. That's one of the things that we can do by doing this in black, you know, is we can add like some highlights on the tops of these rocks right here and make them look a little bit more dimensional. This one looks flatter right here, but you know what I mean? It just has that different type of look to it. But I think, and again, I think some crystals on here, like two or three little crystals would be pretty cool in this background right here. A couple of real small ones or twinkly ones, or you can do like silver stars in here that, you know, you can do your constellate, you can do your splatter painting with white on here with the general stars and maybe do like a constellation, like a specific constellation in the uh, silver pen. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so on this one right here, let's see if we can utilize these more for that kind of watery section down below. God, I'm, I'm thinking about that white though on there. That white looks pretty good, I think. But let's go with the black on here again and have this more of a, like a water area down below. I think that's too good to, to not explore down here, this kind of, this thing right in here. Cause it really does look like one of those little, those little motion gifts or something like that. And actually, let me take this right here let me take a clean, I'm just taking the clean side of my, um, cotton ball and I'm wiping off some of this lower portion right here. I'm, I'm wiping off a lot of the, uh, the reflections of the, uh, that's, I'm wiping off some of this black down here, so it's kind of smearing around on me a little bit, but I'm just kind of staying with it. I'm removing more of the uh, the white that I've been that was applied down there that I thought was kind of needed, but I don't think it is, but I want to reveal more of that um, more of that paper down here. So I see I kind of removed some of that to get more of that you know that uh, paper um, motion down there like that it's kind of cool in the sky too but uh, let's do something here all right so some of the weaknesses of this type of material right is that a lot of types of media don't dry on there very easily okay right <laughs> so I am just going to take this. Now we can we can heat set this and then we're going to spray seal it, right? You know, for the other portions of it, but I'm just going to do this right here and just remove that moon up there. You know, because I haven't spray sealed it or heat set. Even if when you when you heat set, you can kind of remove it. It would just take a little bit more scouring, okay? All right, I know this was an experiment and I should kind of just see it through, but I'm going to experiment with removing a image, like a pretty defined image on there in that area here. Like so. It 
it's almost like sculpture or something like that where you're kind of doing like a subtractive process in here. I've kind of skewed my trees a little bit too. But let's see how this goes. In my in my black in the black area it's a little bit kind of like um um removing like a it feels like you're removing like a like a oily type of substance like a shoe polish on something but I can see kind of a I can see a kind of a reverse mark of that moon impression on the surface like it like it went in and removed some of that um um ink that blue ink off that surface there all right so it's like that right there Okay, so going up in my clouds, I need that little bit more of a wispy look up there, too. All right, there we go, like that. And it's a little bit muddled up there. Let me add some stars up there now. Hello, star. Speaking of stars, <laughs> thanks for joining in. Uh, I spray, Shelly, you can spray seal with practically anything. Um, you can spray seal with a um, an acrylic spray, typically, um, like a Krylon or something like that. That's the usual thing to use. Um, but you can use... Um, I, I don't know if I would use like a hairspray on this one, but you know, in a pinch, people have used hairsprays or something like that to uh, affix um, things to the surface. All right, so let's go in with this thing. If you just joined in, here's the um, impressions that I really like, just using white on this. Um, uh, paper. So I was going to add a moon into here, but I say the less coverage, maybe the better on the is uh, on this paper. I'm usually trying to tame things down a little bit, like especially on the gold one with there's so many different colors in that gold, and it goes from something really light to something like white and really really light. But I'm using that same type of I went into this with the same type of notion, but I'm changing my mind about it. I find that um, we don't need to do as much, I think, on this. And it's it's open to, I don't know, whatever, more just straight stamping on top of it, I guess, even though there, we don't have a lot of lighter areas. I think it looks fine without... Um, uh, without a lot of coverage of the white, uh, the white blocking out. Okay, so this is the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Someone asked me what the difference is between like a Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White and white gouache. Okay, gouache is, they're both water-based media. This one's a white watercolor, okay? And I've seen everyone, people use all kinds of things. People have taken um, correctional pens and just like splatter painted like, had something and going, you know, like this, and then taking a, you know, a, a correctional pen and gone like this with it and splattered their scenes with it before, okay? And that worked. But the one of the things about the Bleed Proof White, if you like that look, the Bleed Proof White is that you can get these little tiny, tiny little stars or, you know, if that's what they're representing in this case. And even that, like that little, it's like the size of a grain of dust that smallest one is like pure white. It's 
it's not you don't have any of that bleed through um that like a gouache would have gouache would be a little bit more translucent where the the bleed proof white is going to be much closer to a uh you know an opaque white um like true opacity so that's why you know like uh calligraphers use it a lot for uh their uh their brush lettering their dip pen lettering and whatnot all right, so let me go with a couple of these larger stars again in here, okay. That. I'm going with a few more stars in this one than my other one because of all that kind of wipe off that I did in there. So I want to obscure, um, kind of that muddled area in there that I have, you know, did in there. But, okay, that looks better without that moon. But the moon wasn't really complete, though, like I said. Um, I was going to make it more um, opaque and have it stand out with, like, some clouds kind of reflecting it. But that was because I, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to work, but I think it's um, working fine, uh, like I said, without it. So, yeah. Okay, one of the things, if you just joined in too, I was just mentioning that this blue comes in a multi-pack. There's five different um, types of uh, holograph, uh, two different types of holographic in there. And three kind of more iridescent, star dream-ish uh, types of colors. Okay, so adding in some highlights, I should probably shade some of these rocks as well. If I'm doing the highlighting, I should probably do a little bit of shading as well. But I just wanted to bring in a little bit more contrast, which I normally do with the uh, a thicker application. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'd go with a thicker application of white, uh, white pigment ink. Um, but again, I I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the sweet spot of this this paper with certain types of applications on here. So I'm not, I, there's less I, I don't know, there's less manipulation I think needed here. Again, if you just joined in, then say something like this one right here. This is the same type of paper, but there's just so much more contrast in here, you know. And so many other colors. It's just so crazy uh, busy in there. This one's like super mellow um, from like an emotional uh, whatever quality to it, right? It's like two different, uh, yeah, it's like two different uh, uh, personalities. It's like super hot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like the hot and cold or whatever psychedelic and you know like ultra mellow here okay now uh another thing too about these pens this media on here is not affixed, right? So it's a little bit moist, even, you know, that impression of the black there. You know, you saw how I just wiped that right off before. So as I'm going on here, um, this is the difference between, for me, um, the gel pens and the acrylic paint pens. Now, I love the gel pens that are out there these days. I find them to be excellent for gel pens. And I was using them for a while, but when I started using these acrylic paint pens, I find that I found that the application um, in under different circumstances was so much easier with these paint pens because they just have a little hole on the tip where a gel pen is a roller based one. So if I was doing these little, I still did little dots with my roller pen, you know, gel pens, but I found that more media got rolled up into the pen. So it was just, especially on in a situation like this, where this one just flows easier. It does get a little clogged though, as I'm going like this, I might be taking up some of that 
white pigment ink or some of this uh, black brilliance impression up into the tip, but then to get it flowing is just so much easier than the gel pens. Like I said, I love the gel pens these days too, but uh, for my purposes, when I'm going over other types of media um, that would stand to clog uh, the pen while in use, it's, this one just makes it so much easier. So, okay, so those that's the... Uh, the highlights on my rocks in here. So again, it's the difference between this and this. I guess you can put highlights on this one too and get kind of lighter areas on your trees or something like that, but I don't know. I guess more three-dimensional this way. More contrast here and... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if one's more dramatic than the other one. This is probably more dramatic in terms of the uh, the vertical kind of pillars maybe. Let me see. Sorry if I, I didn't answer questions if they came up or if someone if questions come up for me and someone knows the answer, uh, please answer. <laughs> it must be light sensitive from lighting off the paper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gone through at least four by now trying to get one that will cut straight. It's not happening. What's that now? Yeah, that, was, that must have been uh, in regards to something that's set up there. Shelly can't wait to try this. I hope you try it out. And one of the things I'm not doing on this foil, too, is I you could probably do interesting things with um, embossing on here. But the thing about embossing, unless there's some types of powders that, that melt faster than others, I don't like spending too much time with that heat on here um, because I get that, you know, that metallic surface it really starts to bow but can you imagine like raised kind of elements in here in white or black or silver or something like this on this blue i think that would be really cool or we're talking about doing like an underwater type of scenario so you can have things like layered things stamping it in flat and then doing other um, impressions of it and embossing maybe you'd have to kind of maybe like an like in painting, you just, you know, you, you, you mask off the sides of this or something like this with tape and you're just sacrificing the side. You plan on cutting down, you know, the interior a little bit more. And then you have it on a flat surface so that, you know what I mean? It's not stretching and bowing and curling, you know, while you're doing the embossing like that. You know, I don't know if anyone that's going to want to do that, you know, because it takes, you know what I mean? You got to tape off the sides of something, but it seems like it would be worth it, you know, if you got, um, got, you know, some kind of interesting results from it. Okay, I'm going to try to go on here. I haven't been doing too many, um, uh, or any shading on these so far. Let, let's go ahead and shade this a little bit like this. I'm going for this, the corners. Um, I thought I applied it. Now I, I'm looking at it like this. It looks as like I applied any at all. I was looking at it, but I was seeing my own shadow like that, so it looked like I applied it. <laughs> this black. <laughs> it's one of those things of like working on a mirror, you know, basically. A mirror-like surface. It's kind of hard to see what you're applying sometime because of the glare coming off of it and everything. Okay, so I'm going on right on here. I'm adding some like right into those rocks too. So we added the highlighting on the top sides of the rocks. And then I'm applying some of this pigment ink on the bottom portion of it. Okay, I'm not targeting it too much. I mean, I can only target so much using this big blobby piece of cotton ball like this, but okay, so kind of adding this kind of little anchoring type of, uh, you know, vignette down here. I have that cloud up top. I'm going to just go over that cloud. I, I'm going to close off the uh, the left and right um, corners of this paper. I, could pr I should probably streak in more with the black here, but, you know, than the white. But, you know, I thought I was going to have a moon up there earlier, so... I went with white, you know, to have like illuminated um, clouds. Okay, and 
Um, this is where I usually um, kind of skew my imagery. It's where I'm getting real comfortable doing this and I'm not, I don't have, I'm not making a conscious uh, effort to not skew these images. Plus it's getting like wetter down here with a lot more ink and it's building up. So it's like you're stamping wet, a wet slippery, you know, ink into an area with a bunch of wet images still. Okay, so there is that. Seems like that'd be a good place for a like a word stamp or something like that up in that sky, but see that right up there. See, there's maybe the, it's maybe it's maybe I should put less in that so we can have more of that down here in the water, right? But it's kind of interesting having that up there in the sky, like so. So yeah, it's like northern lights or something like that, huh? Okay, let's see. Okay, so Shelly, as you says, you're new to all this. Just remember about um, when working with kind of unconventional surfaces, foils, things like that, you know, that aren't necessarily made, you know, for this type of usage. Um, just stay with the, uh, just be aware of the media surface compatibilities and have, especially in something like this, have media that will dry on your surfaces and you'll be good. And uh, just be aware of like the drying times, like the differences between stays-ons and things like that, um, as opposed to like brilliant sinks right here. See the brilliant sinks, I can blend and tone imagery and shade, you know, bring shading and stuff like that into it. But if you're just stamping the imagery right on right on top, you can just go with stays-on, and you won't even need to worry about it. It sticks and dries on there just fine. And if you're using the brilliant sinks on these things, just remember to spray seal it. You might have to spray seal it a couple coats or something, but you know, you should be good with that. And just be aware of it, you know. I get like I smear into my pieces all the time. I in my foil class, I just mentioned to everyone, hey, you know, you're gonna be touching your imagery probably and getting your fingers all kind of mucked up and stuff. So just, you know, just know that go you know what I mean? You, when you're stamping your first imageries on the foil, you're going to kind of stamp it, and, you know, it's going to skew. Just kind of know that going into it, but it's all kind of fun. You know, it's like slippery, inky fun, right? All right. So let's see here. Uh, uh, Pre-cutting papers. I missed the beginning of this live. Okay, we answered that one right there. Uh, the white and blue. I'm with you with the white and blue, Kay. You know, I might like that one better. Silver ink. Yeah, I think the silver would be good, too. We might be able to layer on here, too. You can go with, like, a white. I'm not sure. I'm I'm never sure what looks like it's closer to us it, when we use certain inks in combination. Does the white look closer or does the silver look closer? But I think it just depends on the amount of glare. Let's say I put a bunch of trees down here. And some I stamp in silver, or a couple I stamp in silver, and then some I stamp in white. Um, I guess at certain angles, the silver one looks closer because it's illuminated more than the white. I, mean, I want to do that one on this one, I think. Uh, hello, Marine. And it says, Cheryl, no scratches from wiping off. Uh, not after you spray seal it, so. Um, Kathleen's not finding this paper yet. Are there lives every... No, not necessarily, Kathleen. It's whenever I jump on. They're, they're all kind of impromptu. It's not really whenever I feel like it, Kay, as much as whenever I can jump on. Because <laughs> I always feel like stamping. Uh, but yeah, we need to, we need to do, um, some like regular times, I think. Um, let's see. I would think you need to be careful. Of, yeah, yeah, Cheryl, exactly. So on some of these though, on some foils, like the gold foil, 
you start spray, you know, heating it, and because it has that metallic thing, it's yeah, you get that little distortion. But like on gold, you get that rainbowy type of look. If you kind of, you know, don't do it too much, if you do too much, then it seems to disappear. But it starts to move it in those different types of colors. But on this one too, I think you can get that kind of bubbling of this whatever type of surface that's on there. I don't know if this is coated with some plastic surface or something, but you can run into that type of thing too. Okay, I didn't know if you meant Kathleen. I didn't know if you meant uh, just in general. You're not. I didn't know if you meant you're not feeling this paper. You know what I mean? Like it hasn't hit you in terms of uh, that. But the link for this paper is right in the description too. Now this one is there's there should be on this foil there should be um, four different varieties I think packs, and uh, this one is the blue one. There's the gold and like a pink or reddish one i think too okay on this one right here i wanted to go with that water on this one but now i'm thinking where's where's my other oh this was one piece right here i wanted to use that that real kind of watery look down here why is this this patterning right here looks different than this one right here why is that see those all those different striations in there like that. Is that on here? Or did it change with the media that I applied on top of that? Maybe the light isn't hitting it at a certain angle. Because I wanted to stamp a scene up top like this and have all of that watery type of motion down below like so. All right, maybe I'll do this one in the white. Okay, let's do some foreground trees down here, okay? But let's do it in white, maybe. This one's a little bit too wide. Let me alter this. Let's go a little bit more slimline too. Let's go with let's go with a four inch right here. I think that'll be kind of a cooler format for this. So it'll be, I'll measure it. So it's four by, it'll be four by um, eight and a quarter, okay? Maybe not quite slim line. I don't know what ratio constitutes a, you know, a slim line card, but maybe this is like, this is like letterbox or something like that. I haven't heard that term in a long time, letterbox, you know? It's like when you were renting a movie back in the day, it's like, oh, did they have the letterbox, you know, version? <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Let's go with, um, let's go with, I think I'm gonna go with the white on this one, okay? I mean, you saw what the black one looked like here, <laughs> you know, but that black though, with that water pattern down below, uh, might be kind of cool here. Uh, all right, let's see here. This will definitely be a quick card though, in this format being that I don't have to do any kind of blocking out down there, but let's see what some layered trees down here would look like. A little bit of layering. Okay. Kathleen, when you go into that holographic, you're not going back. <laughs> Once you go holographic, you're not, I use the colored foils all the time, but there is something to be said. Okay, so the colored foils I love doing, okay? I would say that um, with um, holographic pieces, they're a lot more interactive, potentially, because when someone gets a card from you, or you know, I you know, when we're making a card for ourselves or whatever, I just can't help but 
I'm always doing this to it, you know, and seeing that, you know what I mean? It's real kind of an attention getter. Or when you're walking across the room, if you have one of these on display, it looks like it's doing this, you know what I mean? One of those things, you know, as you're looking at it at a different angle, you know, so it's like, it, you know, it's like a card in motion or something like that. I I feel these days if I'm doing a is there a top and bottom to this? Let me see if there's a different pattern to this at all. Okay, see so see these big huge things. I think it's just what it's reflecting off of my desk though, right? It's the lights on my desk. I think these are my studio lights that are showing up in here. Let me see what this looks like with it. Oh, oh. I didn't even think about this. Look at this. I just threw on my incandescent light bulb, okay? Can you see this warmer light? I didn't even know that these colors were in there until I put on that light. So, is there? Yeah, there's greens and... Look at that red right down there on that horizon. At certain angles like that. And here, look at that, I didn't know pink was in here. So it just, I mean, it, it's holographic, so it just depends what um, what type of whatever spectrum is like reflecting off of it. That looks like really different right there. Those like speary types of uh, reddish, you know, bases on there. So you go like that. Look at that. Isn't that weird? So I'd say with the uh, the colored foils are really awesome to work with, um, but with the um, the col did I say the colored foils? But the holographics are ones that you kind of you can trip out over. It you can have a natural trip though. <laughs> Maybe I should leave this light on here. Okay, let me see. Ah, it's kind of glaring right in my face though. I'll show you what it looks like with and without. Okay, so let's get this down here like this. Let's leave a little bit of space up top for some star patterning. I'll, it'll be nice to do a nice quick card for you all too. Because this, I think, won't allow me to add in, you know, just go nuts over it and keep adding all these little fine little details and stuff. I think it looks better kind of minimal. All right, now I kind of wiped off some of these um, shadows down here. I guess it would have been okay because they kind of act as reflections down below there, but I just kind of left it like that just so we'd have more of that um, kind of, you know, the patterning from the, uh, the, the paper showing. Um, okay, let me see what trees I want to add in here. Okay, so let's... Here's where I'm not sure what to do. I want to add in some white and I think silver, maybe? I'm kind of not sure now that I see all these, there's all those other colors in here. Let, let's just, let's see what we, let's see what this is looking like with white in here. Yeah, I'm not sure here. Okay, let's let's just go here. We can it always we can always wipe it off, right? I'm an enabler. Yeah, but you know what I was thinking about? I, there's some things like when I was doing that um, that gigantic uh, um, ten by sixteen yesterday. I was like, I use quite a bit of media on here, like different media. But I'm always using the same ones. It's always like, it's like Taco Bell, you know what I mean? They're like they have whatever, 10 ingredients, and it's just like all in different configurations across, you know, whatever, 30 items on their thing, you know? So I'm always using the same stuff over and over again. So that a lot of that doesn't change. But one of the things with me, though, I really don't use a ton of different stuff. Like a lot of the types of media people are kind of bring up, it's like I never heard of. 
So when I go on like the uh, like those stamp wars um, on the Nancy Stamps channel and watch that, I'm seeing all kinds of stuff that I've never even heard of before. And then I buy that stuff, you know. <laughs> it's like, hey, what, what, what did, uh, what did she just use, you know, right before that? What, what was that, you know? What was that pen that was just used? You know, because it's hard to follow in that that stamp wars um, uh, event, um, because you're following four, three or four different people working on cards, and they're all in their kind of time constraints. So you might be watching one develop and it's like someone threw in something, you know, um, you know, while you weren't watching. Or you're, you're also reading the scrolling um, message window too. So, <laughs> so you, there's a lot of stuff going on um, during that event. It's, it's like, it's like a, It's almost like a, it's almost kind of exhausting in a way. Because there's like, there's like pressure on them too. And if I'm watching like some show with, uh, you know, some people competing or something like that, you know, it's a bake off or something like that. I can't relate to that, but you know, I've stamped before. So, you know, I know how that goes, but I haven't stamped with like under like a timer. So I've realized after the first uh, event that I watched, I was like, man, I'm kind of like tired after watching it um, in a good way. It was exhilarating. I think it was like a, if you watch a, the Stamp Wars, it's a little bit, it's kind of cardio. <laughs> it's like cardio exercise. Okay, so the, let's see what we're lo looking at right here now. All right. It's kind of weird because, okay, so these things aren't set in here, you know what I mean? But the, I think that uh, that's where the, uh, the, um, the white splatter painting will kind of bring... Uh, okay, so speaking of that, I was going to stamp this out in silver. But as I just mentioned that splatter painting, I think I should do this first because this is going to be splattered in white. And we'll see if this is going to be enough to kind of tie some things together. It, before I, on this paper right here, when I don't splatter paint it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look right. You know what I mean? I need that stability that's provided by the white in there. We like to, we had Taco Bell last night. <laughs> after that, uh, after that four hour stream, I was mentioning earlier, I text uh, my wife that was at, uh, the, you know, that took my son to the gym. And I said, uh, you guys think he might want to grab something on the way back? Cause they get back at like 9.30 too. And, um, I think we finished the live stream like at 8.30 last night. And uh, a 10 by 16 scene is a little bit... Uh, I mean, I wasn't tired or anything like that, but it's a you know, it was a little bit, you know, it was a little bit tasking. I don't know. It might have, it was probably tasking for people to watch too. If anyone, you know, sat through it all, even like an two hours of it okay so going into this let's go with a little bit of that kind of angle again i guess it would be like an angle like this in theory and then the angle would be down here right okay figuring out as i go right here okay so if i'm going for that little bit of an like a milky way type of angle in here i need to go a little bit closer than spraying farther away like i normally do All right, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> this is like way too thick. I just add a few drops of water in here. 
This is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, otherwise known as like Genie's uh, Genie's favorite uh, uh, Genie's medium. Genie, are you on still? Yeah. Genie goes through a bottle of this each um, with each scene that she does. So when I say um, for us, for most of us, like a bottle of this is like lasting, you know, it might last five years or something like that. It used to last longer with me, but I started, you know, doing a lot more splatter painting. With Jeannie, she calls this like, this bottle is like one scene. <laughs> okay. So let's go like that. Kind of like that. It's like that right in there. Okay, and I want to go a little bit stronger up top. And let me go down here. I, I don't want I don't want a, this to be super definitive in terms of like an angle. You know that same type of angle in here. I think that would look a little bit awkward. Okay, like that. If you get a big blob down there, just kind of wipe it off or let it dry and then wipe it off, okay? It'll come right off the surface with no problem. And bleed proof white. Another thing about bleed proof white is it dries super, super fast, okay? And again, it's like a calligrapher's, you know, medium so when they're doing their lettering and things like that you know what i mean they need something that's going to flow really well and um they need it to dry really fast you know they don't want to be going across there and you know having a bunch of stuff smear or something like that yeah that stamp for us is awesome uh cheryl i love uh seeing that and i i guess it's for me it's watching uh people using the the stamps sometimes you know some of them had I, I forget who it was. Was it Tracy? Tracy hadn't done any scenic stamping like in her life before. I think before the first uh, um, time, you know, when they used uh, one of the sets. So it was interesting seeing how that uh, someone using uh, the stamps that had never done scenic stamping in general before. Um under time constraints <laughs> you know <laughs> it, it, so it's under time constraints with people watching so talk about in kind of an interesting kind of scenario you know so i felt for her i felt uh, pressure for her uh, especially and she came up with some great looking stuff you know Okay, so this is silver right here. It's a Starlight Silver Brilliance Ink again. As I mentioned uh, in a previous video, it's one of my favorite um, colors, ink colors. And I'm hoping that it looks like it's in front of those trees, but I guess it won't matter too much. Stamp Wars is this, I, well, how would someone describe Stamp Wars? Someone mentioned some other game show. It's like those bake-offs or something like that that you see, or um, those shows where people, it's like, okay, we're giving, you know, like a Iron Chef, we're, we're giving you a secret ingredient and you have, you know, one hour to make something from it. So with Stamp Wars, they do that same type of thing, but I think it's like, two cards that they have to make or something like that and then they have um these um sabotages they call it so whoever's hosting it so the, no one knows what they're going to get before they open these packages okay 
Okay, so that was the silver right there. And I, I'm going to do another one right in here, I think. And um, let's see, right here, maybe. It looks a little awkward right there. Okay, so there's the silver like that. So the silver catches that. It might have been better to do it in white. <laughs> I might do the ne next one in white. It, it almost, The silver doesn't look too different to me. It looks like it's more translucent white like even like right in front of me where I'm sitting right here. Um, but anyways, they get these sabotages. So, you know, everyone's stamping out and someone might say, uh, whoever's hosting it does these things. Um, and they'll say, okay, uh, so suddenly on your cards, you, um, one of the cards has to be an oval shape or something, you know what I mean? Or, okay, now you said you have to use, one of your cards has to be, uh, foil or you know what I mean or you can't use your stamp position you know what I mean it's stuff like that or okay now you have to come up with a in addition to the two cards you're doing you have to come up with an envelope like a matching envelope or you know what I mean they'll do stuff like that and uh, it's like oh my god the first time I watched that it was like they already have to do two cards like in an hour or whatever it was whatever that time frame was and now they've thrown in there like an extra thing, you know, to do. And I know how long, you know, I take on my cards. So I'm thinking, my God. And you know, like some people have never stamped with, you know, that imagery before. So it was, uh, it was really, um, it was really uh, kind of nerve wracking uh, in a really great way <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't me. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to the white version of a smaller um, leafless pine right here. And that looks pretty good. Let me go with one more here. I'm going white over white. Okay, so that didn't show up at all. I was going to see if it showed up and it didn't. So that is fine. So it looks like that right here. And let's see, I did do that one tree in silver. So I'll do it like a silver, a couple of the silver stars up top here. Two cards normally, sometimes they make a tag. Okay, thanks star. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's fun for me to watch. I, I, I haven't jumped on on all of them, but I need to watch more of them. I watched, uh, ah, I forgot what the other one was, right after the Stampscapes when I watched those. And then sometimes I watch the individual channels with their um, follow-up pieces, not just with Stampscapes, but uh, I, uh, I check those out. Yeah, these are all brilliant sinks right here, Kathleen, because these ones will dry on this surface, no problem. Here. Let's take a look and see what this one's looking like with uh, that other light in there. Oh, look at that. Added that red and yellow um, look in there. Okay, so I'm looking at this. Okay, so this is what I haven't done so far. I haven't gone in and added those extra little larger stars because still these images are kind of floating in here, you know? Not necessarily these because this is anchored, but this right here. So I need to bring in a little bit more contrast with those stars in there, okay? And I think that'll anchor it down, but I'm gonna add in some of these silvers in here too. Yeah, they think outside the box a lot um, in that, and they're all having to do it on the fly. It's really great. Um, uh, I'm from California here, Kathleen. Yeah, they have to do it on the fly, so it's a really good exercise. Um, You know, in terms of like, you know, just improvisation and whatnot. We should all do that, you know, um, set up some kind of scenario. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> 
it'd be good from a creative creativity. St it's really great in a creativity standpoint if you don't have a heart attack. Right. <laughs> Hello, Crimson Rose. Yeah, this is really fun. I love the, uh, the the blue paper here. See, I'm not sure if this white, you know what I mean? The white, I don't know, you know, if that's going to look... I don't think this is going to look good on that gold one, that gold paper. But I think it looks pretty good on this blue. And I do love papers, as I've, as I've mentioned, um, that just inherently have um, an excitement to them. And again, I don't, I'm not going to use it all the time, but um, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I just used that white piece of paper yesterday, but. Um, it's kind of nice working on stuff once in a while that, you know, where you're not adding certain types of elements into it. Like normally if I wanted, you know, that type of sky or something like that, I'd be creating it with inks. Okay. But it's not going to be more dynamic than this one. I don't know if it's, you know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't make it worse. I mean, it, you know, it has, a, it's different, but this one's just, you know what I mean? There's a certain dynamic to it and just, it's nice having it in our repertoire, you know what I mean? Just depending on what you feel like doing. Sometimes I don't want to, you know, I just don't feel like using this type of paper, you know what I mean? I just feel like doing something a lot more mellow or something like that. So it kind of depends on what mood I'm in, but <clears throat> I will say that a, um, where I wasn't using this type of paper at all, like for many, many years, I'm like wide open to it now. And um, I'd be avoiding um, like super loud surfaces, but now it's like, um, I don't know if I'm looking for it, but you know, I'm a lot more curious about um, I don't know, the different materials out there now. Because I can see how they can be used now, where I couldn't really before. Yeah, like even on this one, I didn't know how, you know, how this blue would show, you know, or the white would show up on here until now. Uh, or well, whatever, a few minutes ago. I don't know, what, what it, what's it been? Or maybe it was an hour, hour and a half ago. <laughs> Time flies, huh? That's what we always do. We always get into this. And uh, it's like you look up at the clock and, you know, hours have gone by. I didn't know it was on live stream. I knew it was a while, but I didn't know it was four hours yesterday. I mean, four hours is longer than the extended cut of, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings. All right, so that is that. Um, do I still have that piece here? I'm going to add in the piece. I can do it in silver, maybe. Uh, so there's a silver element down there. Let me do it in the silver. The silver might be a little bit more subdued. Maybe it'd look kind of cool. I don't know. Or, or horrific. <laughs> okay. My silver might be a little bit dry too. So it might not be st stamping out as kind of shimmery. Okay, I'm stamping this lower. That other one, I stamped it up a little bit too high. Don't skew your word stamps. Super easy to do. In fact, I just thought I did it again. But, okay, that looks okay. 
Yeah, but yeah, see that piece right there? Do you see how it's a little bit kind of set back a little bit from the white in there? So I think I think we could stamp, you know, these different images on here in silver. You know, I think silver would look fine against this blue. Um, and the brilliant ink down there is strong enough against this particular blue. I didn't think white, like I said, I don't think that white on that um, gold one's going to work. I mean, I could try it on a small piece, but here's the my incandescent light on here. Let me let me switch off. Um, let me see if it changes at all by just switching off my uh, fluorescence. Did that change it at all? Let me see. I still have some fluorescent coming from this way, but this is just mostly the incandescent over the top here. You can see it in the reflection right there, but that looks way different to me. Well, especially like that, than just with that overall kind of diffusion. The white really stands out against that background now, but we're getting like a lot of these different colors in here too. Let's see this one right here. This one I see a little bit more purple in there, or I did just want to, before I moved it over at certain angles, it had more of this. I just saw like this violet beam coming across this way when it was like over here. But these holographics right here, like I was saying, they're just, that looks like completely like night right there up in that sky. But look at that beam there. And like I said, right down here, you know, I blocked off a lot more because I didn't know um, how that would look down there. Now, doing it again, I wouldn't have so much down here. I'd have these clouds kind of like up here, you know, but uh, I didn't know that. Before, with that gold one, I was having to block off a lot more. And let's take a look at this one right here. Just kind of more of the vertical. It might look better kind of with these vertical, huh, on here. But I thought it looked pretty good. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a little bit too extreme, but I, I was getting that kind of that ripply thing going like in this one under different lighting circumstances. Look at that. It's like the sun rising or something like that. Or it, Okay, so the, like this, when you go like this, it's like time-lapse, one of those time-lapse videos. Let me see something here. Let's flip this off again. Okay, so this is my thing right here. See, I wanted to get, yeah. That, yeah, there it is right there. See those right there? That looks like water. That would be perfect for water for me. But I don't see. I guess, okay, I see a little bit of it like that. So maybe it's more in like smaller spaces or something like that. Um, it's one of those things, it's like, a, what is that, the difference between like a, you know, dogs and cats or something like that. They have their own personalities. So they'll do what they want to do. <laughs> but yeah. And then here's the vertical again, like that. And okay, so it looks different than this, like this, right? But then you change the axis a little bit like that, and now that they look like this. They're, uh, these types of cards are called mood cards. You know what I mean? They reflect the, uh, They'll reflect the uh, the personality of uh, wh whatever whoever's holding it. Um, it'll uh, show the whatever mood they're feeling. <laughs> now, so I guess the, there used to be some heat reactive types of papers out there, weren't there? I think when you put your hand on it like that, I remember, and then you come up like that. There was like this little rainbowy patterns or stuff like that on there. I think I have some of it somewhere. But there we have it there, uh, the first kind of experiments with uh, this paper. Um, hopefully, kind of, uh, you know what I mean? It uh, inspires, so you, you, hopefully you got some ideas maybe from 
these first kind of initial experiments. I mean, some, you know, you mean, some of you mentioned, uh, or maybe, I don't know, did I mention it? But the, but I was thinking underwater or something like that would be kind of cool. I mean, definitely Northern Lights now that I look at some of these uh, colors that are coming out under different lighting kind of certain situations, um, light pillars. Here's the incandescent again. God, that is so weird. I just throw on that incandescent like that. Look at that. You know, none, some, you know, like that. It's like really strange. I'd never even really thought of that. Look at that one right there. What's coming up right there. It's like nothing to something. So, and then you did it to do something where you, you have some Christmas lights around it, you know, that are blinking and it's changing everything in there. I think that'd be kind of cool. Okay, of all the, all the, you like it, huh, Linda? Good, good. I, I think blue, yeah. Blue is pretty cool here. I wasn't quite sure about, um, like, the, like, the red and gold here, but this blue is pretty good, I would say. It's definitely in the, uh, going to go into the rotation. So again, we have this lighter blue one here. This one to me look, looks looks like it has a little bit more of the personality of the gold one with all those different colors in here. Okay, I haven't even looked at this under this incandescent. Uh, it just gets brighter like that. But it's kind of weird on the blue in the fluorescent spectrum, right? I mean, that makes sense, I guess, but it's it's strange how much that comes into play with the blue one in particular in terms of that spectrum of, uh, you know, fluorescent light uh, in there. Look at that beam of green in there like that. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. So when uh, when you give these cards to someone, you just got to remember to tell them to, you know, when they look at your card, they have to, like, flip their lights on and off. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to view that's the way to view your card look at this right here though um on this one right here you can't even see that tree line in there right but now with that background little beam coming across i thought it was green just a minute ago um yeah you can see it in there with that uh with <laughs> you know with that uh incandescent on there like that uh let's see yeah, which one did you like, Kathleen? Left, right, or center? Was it this one? And what what do you guys like? Do you like it better with the, uh, you know, just under the blue tones or something like that? Or do you like it with kind of a... Those ones kind of look weird, but they're kind of cool, though. So warm and cool like that. I like this little changing thing up here. Oh, my God. You know, so I hadn't even thought about this. But mirror cards, guys, you know, we put this up here. You can do even white reflecting down in that mirror card area, you know. And can you imagine that type of thing or these reflecting in a mirror, you know. So I just got my silver pack in like a couple days ago. So I I think I hadn't even thought about it. I think the mirror card thing might be the uh, like the really big um, potential um, sweet spot of this paper, you know. Because you can have all that really reflected down here. So it'd be a true kind of mirroring of sky. See, like down here, we don't have this in, in you know what I mean? That, in theory, would be reflected down here. But if you do a mirror card situation, you're, you're going to get that. And it's going to look more three-dimensional. And can you imagine these trees just against silver with that reflected down here? That might look like super dimensional. So I think that's that's what I'll do next. I'll do a mirror. I'll, I'll do a mirror card situation with uh, you know, with this paper, and I think that would look kind of cool. You like the one on the right there, huh? Reflect. I think we 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 have in here. It's like reflection, and is it refraction? I think refraction is what's happening with these two, right? So, yeah, that refracting light. 
So quick stuff here. So remember, if you just joined in, we're gonna have to spray seal these. So again, like, like I said, I think it really benefits from that those stars up there like that. Um, just to kind of anchor everything down, it seems strange that, you know, kind of a splatter painted little white like that would be the thing that kind of stabilizes something, but but I really think it does, especially even when we're doing it in black like this, I, I think that it cuts through and gives, you know, kind of a stability to kind of this ever changing area up top like that, just to have something stable like that. Um, you know, you won't get so like some motion sickness or something like that when looking at that by having these kind of floating stable things in there, like about like so. So try that. And for me, um, these pieces really on this type of holographic, a lot of times it doesn't look right to me until I do something up there, word stamp or something like that. That's why I kind of do those floating things down in those mirror cards too. It just gives it another thing of stability within it like an ever-changing kind of area like that. So, um, yeah, if someone was really awesome, you know what I mean? If you, some of you have like really great like handwriting too, um, taking like a pen like this, I think would be kind of cool. And to do, you know what I mean? Like those little journaling types of things where you're writing across something like that. I think that'd be kind of awesome, you know, to have your own handwriting within, um, like an area like that might be kind of cool. So um, I didn't uh, I didn't use any of the stays on Kathleen. I busted this out just to show people um, it. So, okay, so if you have the stays on right here, like on this one right here, I didn't do any blending at all. Okay, with, um, I guess I didn't do it here either. No, and this one I did, I did put some white in the background like that because I thought I would need a little bit of cloud structuring. But if you're using this, you won't need to spray seal it. You know, the the white um, bleed proof white. Okay, if you rub on there like that, it's probably going to come off because it's just a little bead of dried watercolor paint. But no, you know, you're not going to give this card to someone, and someone's going to take their finger and just start wiping in there like that. You know what I mean? So I think it'd be fine. So I don't think you'd need to spray seal them at all had we used the stays on pig. Has anyone used the stays on pigment? I don't know if it's kind of a, well, the cover has this little bit of a warm, creamy looking. It's called Snowflake, but um, I, I don't have a re-inker for this one, so I just didn't use it. And I'm not quite sure if it would look a little bit different. If it's more, if the stays on, I don't know if the stays on is more translucent, you know, where they went, stand out as much, but maybe it looked good, you know, maybe it would re uh, recess a little bit visually into the paper a little bit, you know, if you have some of that paper showing through, as I'm saying that, I'm not quite sure if we want that, or if we want like that real opacity, you know what I mean? So we don't have the that patterning showing through the images. I'm not quite sure um, what would look good. So if you have the stays on white, test it out on there and see if it works out. So, yeah, the blue cardstock, I think, worked out pretty good, Crimson Rose. I think it's a good one. When I started using that pink, you know, that red and gold, I thought, I didn't even know they had the blue, but I just, I wanted to test out that link, and I thought, oh, they, they have a blue pack, so um, blues are always the ones that probably are a little bit more, you know, kind of natural for scenes, you know what I mean, over a metallic, you know, red, uh, card or something like that so um that just that blows me away like that um yeah i'm real happy with it we'll see what the where this one goes too you know the uh <laughs> we'll see how this one goes here i'll try to think of a good kind of a use for this one too um if you're prone to kind of a light seizures, you know, uh, be careful when using this one right here. Wear some UV uh, sunglasses or something like that when, you know, using that paper right there. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, Debbie, we're just uh, finishing up on this one. We're using the uh, that holographic cardstock here, but the blue pack. 
um, which I just got in like, I don't know, I got it in like an hour before, um, uh, I, you know, it came on with this live. We stamped everything in um, brilliance inks on here, which are still wet. And um, I will allow these to air dry. I prefer air drying more than heat setting, you know, unless I had to get this done and I, you know, I had to mount it and everything like that. I'm going to let it air dry. And then I'm going to um, spray seal all of this, um, especially over the imagery, uh, not necessarily the, um, the, uh, the splatter painted white. I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? They'll get a little bit of residual spray. And then we'll format these. I think these cards look really good um, formatted onto uh, some of the other papers maybe that came with that pack. There's two types of uh, the holographics. There's the dark blue and that light blue that I was just showing. And then three like iridescent um, card stocks similar to like a pearl or a uh, um, star dream. Uh, type of surface. It has that here. I'll show it right here again. I showed this right when I got on today. Where is it? Okay, here it is right here. So here's the pack right here. Um, so Kind of a light medium or is it medium oh yeah, yeah yeah here's the medium right there so light medium and uh i wouldn't call this a dark blue it's like a cobalt or something like that and then you have the two versions of this right here this one's much lighter so i guess it's showing more of a full kind of spectrum on there i'd preferred like i said just the two of these like this but uh you know i can use the uh the other two and this foil i find reasonable you know in terms of the cost so and i, I think that looks really good you know in terms of a uh, these ones right here, I guess we could stamp on them, but um, I really like these colors too, just to kind of mat um, these other pieces off. Cause I'm often, I'm doing like blue tone scenes all the time, blue mono, monochromatic uh, scenes. And these ones will kind of be nice to utilize in that, uh, I don't know, kind of whatever scenario. So I'm real happy with this blue. I don't think I'm going to get that. I think there was that red pack, but I said that before with this red foil that I got a 60 pack of. I think, Linda, you, didn't you buy the red pack? That's 60, 60 sheets of uh, that red, just red, super reflective foil. I got it because it was like, I think it was like a $12 for like 60 pieces or something like that. But this paper here, I don't know. I don't buy foils if it's like 50 cents a sheet or a dollar a sheet, you know. But, um, but these I like here. Okay, so yeah, uh, Kathleen, you don't get a notification. You have to click that little bell and then you'll get a notification when I come on. Um, yeah, so you gotta be subscribed and the notification bell. Uh, thanks, Jeannie. Oh, thanks, Travel Dreamer, for that. You already answered that. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, yeah, hope to see, hope to, if, if you have any problems with the foils, drop me an email or something like that. Um, but re just remember to use the correct compatible um, inks with this. So if you're going to do like a black on top of something, it could be any type of those solvent styles of inks and they'll adhere to it. But on this one right here, I had to put that white in the background first with the brilliance, okay? And then I stamped over the top of that one. So this one I was stamping on top of really brilliant ink as opposed to the, the, uh, the uh, just straight on the foil. So just keep that in mind, you know, different types, different looks. Silver on here, kind of look, you know, kind of interesting too, you know, try some different uh, types of looks on there. Do little, you know, types of little bookmarks or something like that, or ornaments or something like that, and do some tests on it. 
these are just like my preliminary, you know, tests right here. So seeing how they looked. So right here, does that silver tree look good amongst the, the white? I think that silver one looks pretty good, you know? I think that that was white. It would a little be, it would be just too redundant. So I don't know, maybe another tree right here in silver in front of these white ones might look good. I don't know, but yeah. Play around with some crystals and some glitter on there too. I think that would be kind of interesting. Kathleen, we're on all the time. Uh, sometimes not, I guess. Sometimes I'll take like a week off um, if I'm filling like a crazy order going somewhere or something like that. But um, they're, they're almost like every other day or so. They're at different times though. So jump on if you can or if you feel inclined. And uh, yeah, we'll try to come up with uh, some other types of uh, interesting... Uh, interesting uh, uh, subject matters and whatnot to cover. This one was fun for me because uh, it's always fun getting uh, some sort of new medium. This one right here, if anyone doesn't know, I had a moon up here, but I just kind of erased it. Basically, I wiped it off of that surface like that. So it's a little bit hazier um, than the other ones because there's a little bit of residual um, white up there. But anyway, thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of evening or day, whatever time you are. <laughs> We're gonna have a mar we should have a marathon here, uh, Kay. Uh, we'll do it in a we'll do it in a Zoom meeting though, and we'll have like a marathon stamping session. That's one of the things too. I want to do I want to do um, starting in the new year. I want to start doing some Zoom meetings too. Some people say, hey, do I got to turn on my cam? No, you don't have to turn on your camera if you don't want to. Someone didn't even want to turn on their camera during a workshop, live workshop, um, you know, which is kind of hard because I couldn't see their pieces to get, you know, kind of instruct them. But I don't know, they were kind of mentioning that everything was going well or whatever. But um, yeah, we want to do some of that type of stuff too. Thanks, everyone. Blue foil fun. Thanks everyone, blue foil fun, that rhymes. All right, have a great rest of uh, evening. And uh, yeah, snowstormy look, that's what I was thinking too. That would be perfect for this blue one right here. Uh, this, I need to go more vertical. I think I want to do, we should do a super uh, tall um, vertical one, you know, for those uh, kind of northern lighty type of uh, looks on this. It's just perfect for that type of, uh, that type of, uh, this particular type of uh, holographic with those super long pillory types of uh, light beams. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that uh, sometime, Crimson Rose. Let's have a, let's have a, the zoom. So I'll announce it on a, uh, I don't know, uh, somewhere on uh, Facebook or people are signed up on our mailing list to my email mailing list. I don't know, it seems like email's out, but uh, or I can announce it on this channel too. I think in the uh, in the uh, the posts or something like that it's called. And I'll put, uh, I don't know, my email address and people can uh, email me and say if you want to take the class or not or something like or just join in on the uh, the stamping whatever zoom party or something like that and it should be fun all right thanks everyone we'll see you on the next uh, stream uh, in uh, three hours no <laughs>